Hey guys, Jingo's here, doing another Manga Vault video for you guys. Um, I think this is kind of like my last one until we get another one filled up to do another Manga Vault video. Um, so this is like number number nine. So anyway, hope you guys getting to watch the semi last video of the manga vault series um you guys will like at least know i get another one and there's always you know just let me read a little more and then we'll probably get some more stuff circulated into another box so anyway let's get into this semi semi last one so first up is this I'm so upset. This is the Bobo Bo series, um, which wasn't where it should have been. They started like really early in it, or they they moved it back. I mean, this isn't like when we first get into the series, and actually, like with Shonen Jump. Um, the Shonen Jump magazine, they actually started at the very beginning. This one didn't start there. This is kind of like at one arc out of the middle of it. So, kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, it's kind of a, you know, do you really want to sit through that much Boba Bear kind of thing. <coughs> then we also have this one. This is Mama Ma, or Magical Director Mako Chan's Magical Guidance. It's made by the same person that made like Monster Masume as well. Let's see. Then we have um, Days of the Goddess and Odd Days of the Goddess. These are both, is it wrong to pick a girl up in a dungeon ones? But these are both comedies. This is the first one for it. This is the second. I think this one actually has a lot of my more comedy series in it. I believe so. Um, we have these ones. This is... Monster Misume, I Heart Monster Girls. This is like, um, kind of like a joke series. But we do have a lot of people that write different stuff that actually collaborated on it, which is really cool. And actually, uh, some of these people I've actually heard of before. Um, either somebody told me um, before something about, oh, well, that guy does writes hentai or um that guy does other stuff with monster girls or um something like that you know a lot of times people that include etchy they always want to tell you about hentai too so i feel like that's kind of a why would you do that if you know that i'm not like that deep into any of that stuff so um, yeah, I think the coolest one on there is probably, um, I think the guy that wrote the Monster Girl Encyclopedias is one of them too. Um, but then there's some other people that are on there that are recognizable names from different stuff, which, um, which is like all the different Monster Girl stuff. So I thought that was super awesome. Let's see. So we're going to do this one. This is the Dogs Prelude. Dogs, Blood and Carnage. Or, this is just the Dogs Prelude. But then we also have Dogs, Bullets and Carnage. Great series if you haven't read it. <clears throat> I love the layout of all these different characters and how they mixed them together. And if you guys remember in one of the other videos, I told you guys that I had one where the 
person actually, um, when I got it from Right Stuff, they accidentally nicked it with a uh, box cutter. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of these boxes is it, so if I see it on the back of one of these, I'll tell you guys. I didn't show you guys volume 8, so it must be, I think it's this volume 10 one. Um, it's either the volume 10 or the volume 9, I'm pretty sure. I am not 100% sure which one it was now. Uh, it was like a line though. Like they just kind of went like straight down and it kind of just nicked the book. And I mean, you can still read it, but then you can see the little crease in between it if you're like, if you kind of pull the pages apart. Let's see. Then we have this one. This is Biomega. This is one, I mean, Nihei is really good and everything. I feel like Nihei's best work comes out when he actually has a story. Um, I know he does a lot of them where it's kind of more suggestive because there's not, he leaves it up to the artwork to tell. But I feel like he would do better doing that if it was something that wasn't so ununderstandable, if you know what I'm saying. Because sometimes, these ones being so futuristic, you don't actually catch on to what they're talking about. Or what it's suggesting that it is. But his series like Apossums and Knights of Sidonia that actually go into a lot of explanation are fantastic. So, you know, if you're a Nihei fan, totally recommend this. But between that blame... Uh, Apossums and Knights of Sidonia, I would highly recommend Knights of Sidonia and Apossums and kind of put these on the back burner till you understand Nihei's style a little better. Um, I think I read Biomega first. I was totally in the dark. <coughs> then I read um, Apossums and part of Knights of Sidonia. Then I read Blam. And then I read... More of Knights of Sidonia. I think I still have a little bit left from that. But I can tell you that those ones are a lot better than these ones. At least until you can understand his style. Let's see. Then we have this one. This is the other one. Earlier two guys that I told you. Um, that Stan Lee actually helped. This is Hero Man very good series I think this one's probably more underrated um, than Ultimo but Ultimo wasn't as good in comparison to this one and then like I showed you all before on some other ones look at that thickness Let's see. Whew, this one I have a lot. You guys will get to see this in a second. This is uh, Vampire Knights or Vampire Knight. Like I said before, if you guys don't think that I'm into shoujo or anything, you would be very wrong. I do like a bunch of these. I mean, I just like to read. I like a bunch of the series. And 
And I think that you can really get into a lot of these. I mean, if you just keep it in mind, you're reading it for enjoyment and entertainment. I think it helps you out. I feel like sometimes it's a lot better. Um, and this is for like everybody. This isn't just for certain people. I feel like it's a lot better if you can think, not think about fan service or anything. If you can get past not thinking about the art, if you're not thinking about whatever, then you can get into it and enjoy the story just as much just because the fan service isn't, or not the fan service, but you're not sitting there thinking with a um, mind pointing out things that are wrong. You know, and if you can do that, then I think you have it made. But I feel like some people that can sit there and point out all that different stuff, you know, fan service or whatever, I mean, there's certain people in the world that obviously you could say that them they themselves are fan service or all this other stuff. And some of whatever to somebody could be considered fan service with all of us. I mean, Loha Lee wearing a headband, Otaku Mike having a beard, um, different girls looking the way that they do because they have their hair done or whatever. Uh, you know, even though it's not classified as fan service, like anything can be fan service. My tattoos, uh, anybody's tattoos, you know. Um, and I feel like some people focus on some of that stuff too much while you shouldn't be able to. I mean, if you can sit there and focus on maybe you're somebody that doesn't like tattoos and you read a story that has somebody with tattoos on it, then what's the difference for somebody that doesn't like fan service and it's, you know, you're giving it up to enjoy the story, not because of a personal preference kind of thing. See, and I think there's one more series in here. <coughs> this is one, there's one a lot better than this. I highly recommend that you read just because of how this one was all over the place. And because of, like I said in some other ones, the time skip thing. I don't care if it has time travel in it, but there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. Whenever it it influences the story and it turns from being whatever you originally had it as into a story like that, <coughs> and it makes it very confusing, I hate it. Can't deal with it. So, anyway, this one I would say is very good very good because it spawned off the other series this one in itself is lower on my list but i still love that i read it because uh starting out you did get that whole feel to it then you kind of got to understand more stuff as it went so um, but this is magical girl apocalypse And while I feel like some of it, the part that they considered Magical Girl, the little robot android people or whatever, I think was probably one of the better parts that was in it in the beginning. After they went from there and did the whole time skip thing, like I said, was kind of where I hated where it was going with that. And also, quite frankly, part of what the story was and became turned into, and 
everything was kind of a little extreme for what they wanted out of it. I think that was more of the comical aspect of it because you had this whole idea and it happened happens like four or five times throughout the book the concept is all we're trying to do is get these couple people basically to um, find love with each other and hook up and when you read the story going into it knowing that it's kind of like is that really what this is all about you know give me something else like some more meat onto it but sadly they did not do that But, it is very good. It is a series that I feel like it's fun, it's easy to read, short of some of that stuff that I already brought up with it being um, the time skip, or time jumping thing. You know, and I feel like they started out using it pretty okay, and then just started getting into it more, and basically, like, ruining it. There are a lot of different things out there. I would recommend people read. But yeah, so guys, that's kind of, until I fill up another one, that's kind of the end of the series. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And you guys got to enjoy all the semi-extra stuff that was in there. the little extra content and talks and everything hopefully I'll get a, another box filled up for you guys soon that way you can enjoy a Another installment of the series and just kind of like fully really <laughs> enjoy it and get to know more you know <coughs> that's kind of the whole thing of this series quote-unquote um, It's just kind of to make you guys all aware, like, hey, there's actually other manga that's out there. Because um, I know... I know there's some manga that you guys get to see on a regular basis. Or hear about. And while... A lot of those are good... A lot of this series are, or this series in particular, talking about manga and whatnot, 
and the old stuff actually is something that's a little bit of an eye-opener for manga that might not be around anymore so gotta clean up my space so I gotta move everything back over on this other side bizarre's pops and whatnot but like I said it's really good hopefully we'll have another one soon um, and uh, stay tuned for some more videos you know there's more coming down the line um, I always have a video idea because something will spawn an idea off of it um, no matter whatever it is and um, yeah I mean stay tuned <laughs> we'll have more coming down uh, and I know that there are uh, a lot more videos that I have planned so like I said stay tuned but I'm Jim Graves I will see all you guys later Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, yeah. And if you guys haven't seen my card, there's one right there. There's also one right there. So, inspiration to keep moving forward. So, hopefully. I will catch you guys later, though. Bye.